Hi guys, this is Lauren from Tide Robotics. Welcome to the user manual video for the Flight Stand Test Stand. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Flight Stand 15 as well as the Flight Stand 50, the two newest tools in our line of drone testing equipment. Today I'm going to be working with the Flight Stand 15 standard, but these instructions also apply to the Flight Stand 15 Pro as well as both versions of the Flight Stand 50. Let's get started. What I have in front of me is everything that's included with your flight stand. If you ordered the coaxial version, you'll have two times everything you see here, plus the ground railings kit. The first thing we can look at is the safety guidelines and item checklist. On the front here, you'll see that there is a QR code. This will take you to the Tide Robotics website, to the manuals and data sheet center. There you can find the flight stand and download all of its documentation. In this first box, we have the electrical measurement unit, or EMU. The EMU connects to your ESC and measures voltage and current. In this box, we have the M8 cable, the screws, and the EMU itself. There is also a quick installation guide that you can use in addition to this video to help with setup. It includes information on wire connection, ESC connection, and how to set up the voltage measurement terminal. In the hard case, we have the force measurement unit, or FMU, which measures torque and thrust. The FMU also includes a quick installation guide, which includes key information like torque settings for the screws and step-by-step -step guidance to install the motor mount, optical probe, and FMU. Underneath the FMU is an M8 COM cable that is used to connect to the sync hub. You want to hold on to this case because you can use it to send back your FMU for recalibration if you want. In the next box, we have the sync hub, which connects and synchronizes the EMU and FMU with each other and your computer. Each sync box can support two powertrains, and if you are testing more than two powertrains, you'll receive multiple sync boxes with sync cables to connect and synchronize them. The sync box also comes with a cable connect to your computer via USB and a power cord for plugging into a power source. Next is the auxiliary component box where you can find all the fasteners, standoffs, hand tools, the optical probe, as well as the PT100 temperature probes. We provide two in each box. Finally, we have the stand hardware, which includes two lower L brackets for securing the stand to the floor or the ground rails, one round tube for supporting the FMU and protecting the cables, two upper L brackets for securing the FMU to the stand, and the motor mounting plate for securing the motor to the rest of the stand. With cable management, you have two options. You can either use the tie wraps to attach your FMU cable to the outside of the stand, or you can feed it through the tube to help reduce wind interference. It's up to you what you'd like to do, but you'll need to make that decision at this step because the cable ends won't fit through after you've added the screws. So we'll start by getting the hand tools from the auxiliary box, and then we can start assembling the hardware of the stand. For this part, you'll need the Allen keys and a wrench. First off, we can attach the two lower L brackets to the round tube with the M6 hex head screws and M6 lock nuts. Make sure to add a washer between the nut and the L bracket. You can find these fasteners in the stand fastener bag inside the auxiliary component box. Next, we can install the upper L brackets on the tube with the same set of fasteners. Extra nuts are provided in the bag in case you need them. There are several options for installing the stand on the floor, including using concrete bolts and anchors as we are here, or a piece of plywood. Choose the way that best fits your facility and keep in mind that you are responsible for the strength calculations and the selection of the ground fixture. The ground mounting holes on the lower L brackets are adaptable with M6, M8, 1 quarter inch, and 5 16 inch screws. If you have the coaxial version or are using the ground railing system, install the rails on the floor of your test area with L brackets then use the M6 screws and T-nuts provided to install the stand on the rails. Again, 
you are responsible for the calculation and selection of hardware to properly fix the rails on the ground. The next step is to attach the FMU to the stand. This requires just four screws that you can find in the FMU stand fastener bag in the auxiliary box. You can install the FMU in either direction, whatever works best for your test in either push or pull mode. If you are testing coaxial and want to achieve the minimum distance between rotors, make sure to install the two round tubes close to each other. Next we can attach the motor to the motor mounting plate. Please note that you'll need to provide screws that are compatible with your motor for this step. Install the motor on the surface indicated outrunner motor on this side. Pass the three cables through the center hole or along the surface, depending on your motor's wireout configuration. Then attach as many screws as required and tighten them until the motor is secure but can still rotate. Now we can attach the optical RPM probe to the motor mount using the standoffs. There are two different sizes of standoffs provided, so you can decide which size is best for your motor. We recommend using Loctite to secure the fasteners to the RPM probe for better security. Using the holes provided, attach the standoffs to the motor mount, then the probe to the standoffs. You'll also need to place a piece of reflective tape on your motor. This is how the probe will determine its rotation speed. Make sure the position of the probe aligns with the reflective tape, and you'll want it to sit about 5 to 15 millimeters from the rotor. This is also a good time to attach your two temperature probes at the locations desired with a bonding agent like silicon glue. Now we're adding the pins to the motor mount, and they should be installed on the opposite side as the motor. They will help you align the motor mount on the FMU in the next step. We then attach the six standoffs to the motor mounting plate. You can choose not to use the standoffs if you want to reduce the distance between powertrains during coaxial testing. The standoffs add about 16 millimeters of separation, but removing them will introduce an alignment error that can affect the thrust and torque accuracy by up to 1%, so proceed with caution. We can now start assembling our electrical components. We'll start by plugging in our FMU, then we can get out our sync hub. Place the sync hub in a secure place between the test stand and your computer. Plug in the 9 volt 2 amp power adapter to power it. And at the same time, on the other side, we can plug in the FMU and EMU cables, as well as the USB cable, which will connect to your computer. We can secure the EMU to any solid surface near the test stand and in our case, we'll secure it to the rails we have in our lab. Next, we'll use the Phillip head screwdriver from the hand tools bag to open up the hall sensor on the EMU, then we'll feed the red power cable through it. Make sure the current flows in the right direction as indicated on the hall sensor, and close the hall sensor when finished. Trim the end of the DC input wires or add a small AWG28 wire to your input DC connector, then connect both poles to the voltage measurement extension terminal. We then insert the terminal into the block for the voltage port on the EMU, which will also connect to the ESC. Next, you can attach your ESC to the stand with the tariffs provided or your own. Connect it between the power source and the motor. So we're plugging it into the three wires of the motor. And then connect it to the power source. And this is also a good time to connect your RPM probe and temperature probes. The final step is to install your propeller and tighten all fasteners to the correct torque settings. Tidy up cables using tie wraps, then connect your computer with the USB port. Once everything is connected, you can open the software and confirm that the FMU and EMU are well set up. You'll get green check marks to confirm this. Now you're all set up and ready to start testing.